Jay Thomas, so the children are there for Sunday school. And seeing the first Sunday here, um, we also like to not only celebrate this new season, but also any birthdays this month. How many birthdays in September? One. Who? Pastor Swana. Oh, Pastor Swana, okay. Oh, but you just missed a cake. Um, then, happy birthday this month, Raymond's birthday this month, and Estella's birthday, oh, Monica's mom, and Mary's birthday. So, quite a few birthdays. Any birthdays today? No, I don't think any birthdays today. God is good, God is good. Let's prepare for the word, the bread of God's word, and um, then believe God to do something new. Believe to do something new. Every time I look at the ocean, I'm reminded of God's glory. Because it says, The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of His glory, His goodness. How? As the waters cover the sea. So whenever you see the water, think of God's goodness. Think of God's goodness. Thank God we don't have hurricanes, tornadoes, typhoons that are happening in many countries, especially in the US. Thank God for the blessing in Penang, in Malaysia, the span of so many things. And um, this morning, we're going to look at one or two aspects of Hebrews chapter 12. And we know that the world is still being shaken. Yes. Every time we turn on the news, it's being shaken both with the COVID and with the governments being shaken. With, um, with elections and politicking and just people are so insecure with the unknown future. How long will all this last? When will the vaccine come out? Um, when will the cases drop down? Nobody wants to go back to the old MCO. So there's a lot of uncertainty. And with uncertainty, there is fear. Fear of the unknown. And uh, because human nature wants to predict everything, wants to control everything, so the minute we take out control, we become afraid. Mm. And so we have Hebrews 12, which is, I believe, the word for the season. Um, August, August, September, receiving an unshakable kingdom. It says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. What's the therefore? Verse 28 is there because of verse 27. Right? So verse 27 says, It once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken. As a thing that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. So all that can be shaken is being removed and shaken. And what cannot be shaken is remaining. So what cannot be shaken? The kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God? His righteousness, His peace, His joy, His presence, His power. When it's from His kingdom, it cannot be shaken. But when it's not from His kingdom and it's from circumstances, it can be shaken. So right now, the shaking is revealing the foundation in which people are standing on. Those whose peace and joy came from their circumstances have lost it because of circumstances. But those whose peace and joy have come from the presence of the Lord are still full of peace and joy because they cannot be shaken in His kingdom. So there's a difference being released. And the, and the danger is sometimes when things are going so well, we don't even realize that our security and our peace and our joy is from our circumstances more than the Lord. And when we realize it, when something happens, the circumstances change, whether short term or longer term, we lose our peace, we lose our joy. And then immediately we get all stressed out. Oh, I've got to fix the situation so that I can have peace again. Fix the situation so that I can have joy again. And we become led by circumstances. We become led by externals rather than by Him. So God is allowing things to be shaken to show us where our foundation is and how we can be planted on an unshakable kingdom of His peace, of His joy, of His power. You know why? So that we can speak into the lives of those who are being shaken. So that we can release hope, so that we can release faith. And so let us pray. Father, we just thank You for Your Word. We thank You for speaking to us this morning. We thank you for pouring your spirit upon us. Release the life and power of your word. Let it bring healing, deliverance, wholeness. Let it bring peace, let it bring wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for letting the word, your, your word go forth this morning and not reject you, Lord, but accomplish what you please and prosper the reason for which you sent it. Amen. Let's hold our Bibles together. This is my Bible. It is. I, I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. 
and I can do what God says I can do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verse 28. Since we are receiving. Now that's a very... You know, sometimes you need to check what the word means. Receiving is a very powerful word. And I wonder, it doesn't really make full sense. Is it meant to be receiving? And so I looked it up. What's, what's the, the Greek word for receiving? And, and you don't have to go to Bible school to find out the Greek word. Just get an app, a free app. One good free app is to do that the Bible. So on your phone, you can look up the actual meaning of every word in the Bible. The original word, what it means. And uh, receiving is only the, the, the meaning 15 times. But before receiving, the actual word in Greek for receiving is taking. Which is mentioned 30 times. So that word is interpreted as taking 30 times and only receiving 15 times in the, in the word. So you can read it again. Since we are taking a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Does it make a difference? Since we are taking a peace that cannot be shaken. Since we are taking hold of joy which cannot be shaken. When we need to take it? I think one of the, my favorite examples is the boat in the storm. You can look at the boat as a person's life. A family, a city, a nation, it's in the storm. The COVID is a storm. The job situation is a storm. And on this board, you see two different reactions. You have the response of Jesus and the response of his disciples. The disciples lost their peace, lost their joy. Their foundation was the shakable kingdom of the boat, of the waves and the wind. But Jesus was in an unshakable kingdom of peace that he was asleep. Same circumstance, but different response. And so Jesus was the kingdom made flesh. He was righteous in the flesh. He was peace in the flesh. He was joy in the flesh. And Jesus was more aware of his father's presence than the storm around him. The disciples were more aware of the storm around them than who was in their midst. And as I shared last week, and we need to remind ourselves that just because there are problems and troubles, doesn't mean God is not there. Doesn't mean the Lord is not with you. Because Psalm 23 says, He prepares a table before us in the presence of our... But who's at our table? He is. So although Jesus is at our table, does it mean that we have no enemies? Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil, for you are with me. So just because he is with us doesn't mean there's no shadow of death. But the good news is, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the... So are you more aware of the almighty shadow of the shadow of death? Are you more aware of his presence at your table or the presence of your enemies? So what's the shadow of death and what's the presence of the enemies? Anything that tries to rob your peace and joy. Anything that tries to shake the kingdom under your feet. You see, God has called us to bring his kingdom from earth, from heaven to earth. God has not called his church to wait to escape, the great escape rapture. God delivery rescue me, you know, this world is going perishing. No, no. Before we go up, he wants us to bring heaven down. That's why the Lord's prayer says, let your kingdom come. Seek first his kingdom. Since the day that John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven, suffers violent. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world and then the end will come. The kingdom cannot be overemphasized because the kingdom points to the king. And the king points to his father. Because even the Lord's Prayer, we say, Our Father in heaven, of hallowed be your name, let your kingdom. It's the Father's kingdom. So the church is really a kingdom of families, a kingdom family, a kingdom of peace and joy that you can't get anywhere else outside of Jesus, outside of his house. And so it says, since we are taking, not just receiving, but taking, so number one, we need to make sure that his kingdom is the first priority. And many of us here may be struggling with peace because we don't know, I know some here have lost their jobs, some have had pay cuts, some don't know what the future is going to hold and you don't know how long your savings is going to last and you've lost your peace. But you know what? The only way that God has given us to shift our circumstances is not wait for circumstances to change to get peace, but to be at peace and release peace to your circumstances. You know why Jesus could stop the storm? Because he already had peace before it stopped. And because he had peace before it stopped, he could sleep in the storm. And that peace in the storm gave him the authority to change the circumstances. But most Christians are waiting for circumstances to change before they become peaceful. The disciples were waiting for Jesus to stop the storm before they could have peace. 
that Jesus had peace before the storm fell. And that's why and that's how he could stop the storm. So if you want your circumstances to change, if you want a breakthrough financially, relationally, emotionally, whatever it is, be at peace from his presence. And that rest and that peace will give you the authority to speak to your circumstances. Do not look to your circumstances to give you peace. Do not say, when I get, when I get a new job, I'll, have, I'll be happy. When I get a promotion, I'll be happy. Be happy for when you get it, and you'll get it. Because that's why in Matthew 6, he says, Seek first the kingdom and the righteousness, and all these things will be added to what you seek first. He doesn't say, but seek first the things that you need, and then you will have peace. You seek first is peace, and when you get it, before things change, things will change. Because you get the water right. Because God is jealous for your security. He doesn't want you to be so secure in things and circumstances more than Him. He wants you to be so secure in His promises that He is a good Father, that He will take care of you. But this is how faith is demonstrated, that our trust is in Him. So since we are receiving or taking a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace to serve God, except to be some version say to serve God for gratitude. But let us have grace. How many know we need grace to be at peace when the world is shaking? We need grace to not lose our peace. Now it's not just circumstances that people lose their peace, but sometimes it is offenses. Sometimes it is relational issues. This is a big scale. You know, there's a global storm going on, but there's also individual personal things that can happen to rock your peace. Maybe a colleague, a relative, whatever it is. Let us have favor. To serve. Let us have grace or favor by which we may serve God because we're taking a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Let us have grace to serve acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And this means, let me say this again. Let us have grace, God's grace, God's favor, Amen. that we may serve Him acceptably with reverence and godly fear. What does this tell us? More than often, we serve but not acceptably. You know what the best example of those who serve very well but not acceptably? It's an example in heaven and on earth. Lucifer, he was the best servant, the most anointed worship leader. He led the worship department on heaven. He served very well but not acceptably. He was excellent in his job but not in his relationship to the Father. And so, some, and so this is a big test before us. Many times we are, we are, we are serving so hard, we are serving so well, but not acceptably because our relationships are out of sync. Lucifer so well as a worship leader, there was no one more anointed than him. There was no greater power and glory in heaven, but he wasn't one with the Father. That's a heavenly example. What about the earthly example? Remember the story of the prodigal son and his elder brother. Both, well the prodigal son wasn't much of a server, he was a consumer. But his elder brother was an excellent servant. Worked very well in the father's house, but not acceptably. Why? He was not one with the father. So to serve acceptably is to serve with the right relationship, which is the foundation of what we do. In the book of Revelation, one of the churches, Laodicea, Revelation 3, we often hear this verse in uh, evangelistic meetings, where it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You know whose door Jesus is knocking on? The door of his own house, his own church. Why is he outside knocking in and not inside? What are they doing inside? Is he serving? But the presence of the Lord is outside. So is their service acceptable? No. They're serving without His presence. They're serving without His voice. They're serving without His kingdom peace and kingdom joy. And you know what happens when you don't serve acceptably when you serve without His presence? You get very easily provoked. You get very easily irritated. Your serving becomes a burden. And serving often leads to offense because you don't think you're being appreciated for your serving. You're looking more for men to recognize your work than the Lord. And so God is saying, look, when you serve me, let us serve God acceptably. The word acceptably, as I said in some versions, seems to be gratitude. What does this verse tell us? Look, if we want to be in an unshakable kingdom, if we want to walk in His peace that cannot be shaken, if we want to walk in His joy that cannot be shaken, we need His favor to serve. Why? Not to get Him to do something but because of all that's already done for us. So the greatest thing we can do to show our gratitude for the Lord is doing something for Him. Serving is not an option. But serving the Lord won't bless you if you serve the wrong way. Serving is the least we can do for all that He's done for us. We can never repay God for what He's done. 
We cannot pay for our salvation. This is, we cannot pay financially everything our parents have spent on us from the day we were born. Is it possible to pay your parents back for what they've done to you? Materially or otherwise? Is it possible to pay God back? But what's the least we can do to show we're grateful? To serve. But to serve acceptably. To serve acceptably with reverence and godly fear. So how do we serve acceptably? How do we position ourselves to be planted in this unshakable kingdom so when circumstances change, we'll be more aware of His presence than our circumstances? So that when the enemy tries to rob your peace and joy through circumstances, through flesh and blood, through unmet expectations, you can guard, you can be planted firmly because you have grace to keep serving acceptably. Now how do you serve acceptably? As sons and daughters, and not as servants and workers. And the difference is relationship. You see, in every household, on every big household, the many rooms, you'll often find many children and many servants. They're all doing a good work. They're all taking care of things in the house. But the foundation is different. The motivation is different. The purpose is different. Servants work simply for the reward. They're not interested in relationship. They're not interested in loving or knowing the family members. They just do their job, give me my money and out of here. But children work because they love the family. Children serve because they know how much they are loved by their parents. And so the motivation of children to work in the same house is in response to being loved. And so if you just look at appearance-wise, both are doing a good work. Both seem to be serving very well. Lucifer appeared to be serving wonderfully well as a worship leader. But who knew that one day iniquity would enter his heart and he wanted to take the place of God and kick God out? Who would have guessed with the wonderful way he was serving? Who would have guessed that Jesus is not in his own church but outside knocking and waiting them to invite him back in? And so God wants us to serve him acceptably by serving from his presence, by serving from his peace, by serving from his joy. You know why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength to serve. The peace of the Lord what does peace do? Peace comes from the Hebrew word shaw, which means to be whole, to be complete, missing nothing, lacking nothing. And not only are you physically healthy, but you're relationally healthy, you're emotionally healthy, the soundness in your mind, you're in your position to serve. Somebody is all stressed out at home, peace, how can you do anything? He's a no mind to serve, right? He's obsessed by his problems. And so when we are not planted, on an unshakable kingdom of His righteousness, peace and joy, guess what happens? Everything you do is in reaction to what's going wrong. Everything you do is in reaction to your problems. And so you're not positioned to do anything God wants you to do. Because you're moving in reaction to, your, to the darkness, to the shaking. Everything the disciples did in the boat was, Jesus, Master, the, the water's coming and do something. Jesus was fast asleep. Hi, I said, why are you? So He answered that prayer. Right, He got up. He saw the disciples were stressed out, he spoke to the storm and then he rebuked them. What oh, you little faith? Why didn't you stop the storm yourself? You know why they couldn't stop the storm? Because the storm had got their peace. Why did Jesus stop the storm? Because his peace had calmed the storm. So I can't emphasize this enough. In the times that we are living in, when so many things are being shaken, on a national scale, and a global scale, thank God for the greater Pompinay that we are in green zone for some time. But don't put hope in, in, in that alone, remember, we were 100 days free and then suddenly he came back. All of New Zealand was free for 100 days and then suddenly he came back on 102nd and 3rd day, just like today. So our trust is in the Lord. They said, some may trust in horses and chariots and masks and sanitizers, we will put our trust in the Lord. Because unless the Lord protects us, nothing else will protect us. Unless the Lord builds his house, we build it be. So I'm not saying not to do that. Do what we have to do by the law, but don't put your trust in that. Don't put your trust in that. And what amazes me of God's grace is to see chain smokers live to their late 90s. You no know, matter how their lives so long, their lungs are black. I'm not saying they're smoking a good man, just saying statistics show they shouldn't be alive in their 90s. But how do you know that there are people who are drinking and smoking and they're living a long life? Thank God's grace, maybe waiting for them to get saved. <laughs> Must be the only reason. But don't put your trust. And so for those who are not here, I emphasize on God's SOP scripture, obedience, and prayer. What's God's SOP? When you put your mask on, don't make your mask aware of the virus. Don't make your mask aware of the devil's presence. Make the mask make you aware of the spirit of the words from your mouth. 
life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yes. Every time you put your mouth, say, I will not let any negative word come from my mouth. I will shut my mouth from every negative word, just as the angel did to Zechariah when he said, How can I trust you that I'm gonna, my wife's going to have a son? Remember? When the high priest Zechariah was told that Elizabeth is going to have, going to conceive John the Baptist, Zechariah doubted, asked, How would I know? And immediately he immediately could talk. Dominant mass was put there until John the Baptist was born. That's how important our words are. So let the mass remind us of our words. Every time you wash your hands with sanitizer, remember, clean hands and a pure heart is the one who can stand in his presence. Clean hands, how we do our business, our work, how we relate to one another. Do we use our hands in anger? Do we use our hands to serve? A heart of faith, a pure heart. What's the social distancing? Stay close to the right people and further from the wrong people. Distance yourself from the right people you should be distancing from. And stay close, get close to the ones you should be closer to. That's what the MCO has done. It's pulled everybody away from the world and brought them closer to their family and their house. Because God is doing the work in the church. And so during this season, the whole church globally has been family size. They've broken our identities on a mega church and made everybody of almost the same size and you know. And even now you can go back to church, it's one third its capacity. So we cannot take security in how big we are or how healthy we are. See, a security is not how big our muscles are, I can carry so much weight, but I have my path to health check. And this is the problem. We want to serve God acceptably. Our security is not how well I'm serving. You know, Lucifer, Lucifer could have got very proud in how well a worship leader he was. The elder brother could have become very proud in how good a job he was doing in serving. But neither of them knew that it was spiritually very unhealthy. The church and they leadership could have taken pride in the works they were doing, but unaware that they were spiritually unhealthy. And so we have a tension, the competition between success and health. The foundation of success is health. Never compromise health for success. It's not, Paul said, or what good is it if I win the whole world and lose my own soul? Or what good is it if I accomplish so much but the relationships are broken? So how do we serve God acceptably? First thing we need to take this kingdom by force. You need peace, you need joy. You need God to do something in your life, in your work situation. First be at peace. Allow the Prince of Peace to fill you with a peace. Don't make a peace dependent on your job, but be at peace and then things will change. Remember, change always begins inside out. The world is waiting for outside to change and then they change. God says, look, when you come to the place of peace and joy, now you have authority to speak. Because remember this, our authority lies in our peace. Remember the armor of God? You know what our shoes are called? Shoes of the Gospel of? Peace. Now what is God going to do under our feet? The God of peace will crush Satan. The authority to crush comes from shoes of peace. Amen. If you don't have peace, you have no authority to stop the work of the enemy. And so what the enemy will try to do is when he sees work, he wants you to lose your peace. So you have no authority. Now when you step into that place of rest and peace, now you have authority to stop his work. Just as Jesus stopped the storm. So how do we, how do we come to the place of peace? Righteousness. Righteousness through faith is the door that opens up to the peace of God, that passes all understanding. And the peace of God that makes us whole inside, that makes us one. We, 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 we are not stressed out, we're not frustrated, we're not anxious. We have a supernatural peace. We have a supernatural peace. It doesn't come automatically. You've got to pursue His presence every day in your time with the Lord. And so that's what I do. I say, look, you know, one of the, one of the, you know, God makes all things work for good, amen? No matter how bad something is, He can turn it around for good. And you know what, one of the blessings that can happen when the prodigal son lost everything? How did God turn it around for good? When He was out in the wilderness and had nothing left? He became, He came to His senses. He said, what am I doing out here? I need to go home. And He said, food home. See, before He left, He was in the house, but not out of the house. Lucifer was in the house, in heaven, but not part of the house. His heart was far from God. So it's possible to be positioned together, but not become one. The house of Laodicea were positioned together, but they were not relationally one. And so God is allowing this shaking to make those who are positioned together one. 
Because when you're not one and you just position as the best you can be successful but unhealthy. But you become one, now you become healthy. Spiritually. Now how do you know whether you're healthy or not? The level of peace and joy in your life. If you're not healthy but you're successful, a lot of accomplishment, but no peace, no joy, a lot of stress. But when you're healthy, not only do you accomplish, you accomplish from the place of peace and rest and joy. So since we are taking the kingdom, we all need to take the kingdom. Take it by force. Remember the movement with the issue of blood? Is that what we sang about? She had an issue of blood. She was weak, 12 years bleeding. What did she do? She had to take the kingdom. Jesus was the kingdom. She, had, she was weak as she was. She had to push through the walking crowds, the thousands following Jesus. She had to press through and try and touch his garment. She had to take it by force. And though it, many were touching Jesus, only her touch released the power because it was the touch of faith. See, so how do we touch Jesus today? We do what we need to do. We are here this morning. We come together. We pray every day. But are we doing it with faith? And Jesus said, who touched me? The disciples said, what do you ask me to touch you? Everybody is touching you. No, but power only went to one person. Because her touch was different from the rest. So we may all be singing with everybody. We can all be praying in our homes every day. But how are we doing it? Acceptably, or as a matter of duty, what to do? I have to do this. I have to come. I have to pray at home. How are we doing it with faith? How are we touching it with our faith? The righteousness of faith. Let us have grace to serve. So I want to encourage you this morning, if you're not doing anything for the Lord, do something for Him. In the end, that's number one. Number two is, in all that you do, do it as unto the Lord. So there's two sides of the serving coin. One side of the coin is, do something just for the Lord, for His kingdom, for His work, for the house of God. And the other side of the coin is, whatever you do for anybody, do it as unto the Lord. So your job, is the service is under the Lord. You're not working as an employee, you're working as a daughter of Christ, the daughter of the Father. You're representing the spiritual family. And you're representing an earthly family. You know people on the earth and they know you're a Christian. They don't just see you as, oh you're a Chinese, Indian, oh you're Malaysian, no, you're from this church. Oh you're a Christian. People know you by your faith and which church you're from. So we don't just represent ourselves. They know which family you're from. Well this is so and so's family, or this is from so and so's church. Oh, oh, that's a Christian. Somebody said, may nobody get shocked when they find out you're a Christian. Hi, you're a Christian. I said, never guess. <laughs> okay, may that never be the story. Okay? Is that when people say, I thought so, confirms it. There's something about them that is not like anybody else. Just being the light. So we all need grace to serve. And many times, serving is not easy in the world, in your job. It's not easy. It's a huge weight of responsibility. So Jesus says, look, take my yoke upon me. From, you know, give me Jesus says, give me your burden and I will give you rest. How do you do that? Speak it up. Say, Lord, this is not easy, this is heavy. I give you my job, I give you this responsibility. I give you my stress of no job or, or something is happening. I give this to you. I cast my cares upon you. Lord, give me your care. Give me your peace. I want to be at peace before I see the change. I want, to, I want to be more aware of your presence before I see the change. You've got to speak it out. You've got to pray. Jesus, help me. Give me grace to serve acceptably. To serve with gratitude because of all you've done for me. Give me grace to serve with the peace and joy of your presence. Give me grace to serve in unity and not in stress. You know, sometimes we can hide behind relationships through work. The apostle will be so busy, we have no time to talk. That's what the church already visited. They were so busy, they didn't know Jesus was outside the house. The noise of their work was louder than the sound of his voice. See, the church is called to be a family. And, and that's why we have our Father. We don't say our Creator in heaven. The Lord's prayer is not our, our Master in heaven. Our Judge in heaven is our Father in heaven. Father is the head of a family. And family is defined by a relationship, by unity. And that's the last prayer of Jesus. The unanswered prayer of Jesus. So we want this morning to be planted in the kingdom which cannot be shaken, to serve the sons and daughters, not just as servants and workers, to serve as those who are spiritually healthy and not just accomplishing so much, but not healthy. We want to serve and make to be. We need His grace and favor Amen. so that when the enemy tries to rob your peace, the peace cannot be shaken. So even when things Shift and things will shift. This season will pass. Things will be back to quote unquote normal, something a new normal. Well, 
the time will become a normal, normal, a better normal. This is the time. But when the time comes, make sure you don't shift the foundation of your peace to your circumstances. When things are going well, make sure that peace is not the source of your peace and joy. Because when, if it is, and when it is, it's not going to happen, you're going to lose your peace so easily. But when your source of peace and joy is from Him, no matter what happens around you, you cannot be shaken. Isn't that a wonderful place to be? You won't all of a sudden go into a panic. Something happens, the same thing happens to two people. One gets all worked up and flustered, one is full of peace. Why? Because one full of peace never took their peace from the circumstances. The peace was always from the Lord. So when circumstances change, they were not shaken. So if you don't want to be shaken by changing circumstances, make sure you're standing on the unshakable kingdom. By having raised the serve acceptably, out of gratitude. Ask yourself, what, how can I do what I do differently? Everything you do, do this in ministry. Whether you're washing the dishes, whether you're cooking food, whether you're cleaning your house, whether you're a person at the job, do this in ministry and the Lord. We're all full-time ministers at home and at work. And then say, Lord, what else can I do specifically for you in your house? How can I serve you because you've given so much for me? May we never reduce our serving to our paycheck. Because what God gives you when you serve, not for money, no money can buy. What you receive for giving, not for a price, what God gives you, you can never be bought with a price. So take joy, say, Lord, am I serving you? Do you remember the one guy, God, Jesus gave out many talents to different people, and the one guy with one talent, what did he do? He buried it. Why? And Jesus asked him, he said, Oh, I was afraid, I knew you were a hard master. And what did Jesus say? Oh, son, I understand your fear. It's okay, I know you're not at that level. And, and let's try again. Did he comfort and compliment? Hey, I mean, Jesus is full of grace and love, right? Speak like kindly. You evil, wicked, lazy servant. Why did you bury this talent when you should have messed him? What? Put out in the face. <laughs> Give him the grace, the Lord, grace and truth. Very loving. You should understand the man's fear. He said, take the guy's talent and give it to the guy who got more. The one who did nothing lost everything. But the one who did something, even if it is burnt, to wood he stumble, at least he makes it. Yeah. Safer to do something for the Lord and mess up than to do nothing. Because faith without works is dead. James he says even the demons believe, but they do nothing. So the test of our faith is what are we doing because we believe? It's not the doing that counts as anything, it's the faith behind what we do. And that's why the word righteousness is repeated in Matthew 6. It says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. But the word righteousness is already in the word kingdom. Because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy. So we expand the word kingdom. The seek first is righteousness, peace and joy and his righteousness. So why does God repeat the word righteousness? To remind us not to think that our works make us righteous. But to remind us that his righteousness comes from the faith on which you work. Abraham believed and he obeyed. Noah believed and he built an ark. Are we doing anything for the Lord that requires faith? And in all that we're doing, is it done with faith? Because without faith, we cannot please God. So that's basically the message. Because right now, the world is being shaken and thank God for the things that are getting better. Don't be distracted by what the enemy is doing. Don't be distracted by what's happening in your employment, in your job, or the treasure. Our responsibility is to be planted on the unshakable kingdom. God says to when you can come to the place of being at peace and rest from my presence, now you receive the authority to speak to your circumstances. Come to the place of peace, supernaturally from my presence, just as Jesus stepped on the, on the board. Just as the Lord prepares the table in the presence of his enemies, of enemies. This, as we walk through the valley, you're walking through, we're not going to stay in the valley. The shadow of death, don't be distracted by the shadow of death. The Lord is with you. Because he's the shadow of the Almighty. So the, 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 the stresses and the, and the shakings, is a huge distraction. That's why we are told to seek first his kingdom, to seek his face. Every day, remind yourself of what the Lord has done for you. Remind yourself of your testimonies. Remind yourself of the praise he's answered. Remind yourself of what he's done for something you know. To give you faith. Focus on what releases faith. Speak to your circumstances. Prophesy to it. And you receive grace and favor to serve Him acceptably. To serve Him with gratitude. To serve Him with joy. To serve Him with peace. To shift your circumstances. 
And it's the presence in you comes out. That's why Jesus told the disciples, go to by two. When you enter a house, release a peace. Release a peace. Shalom. Bring my presence wherever you go. Don't lose your presence wherever you go. Okay? Bring this presence. Be the thermostat, not the thermometer. You know the differences? Thermometers reflect the temperature. Thermostats set the temperature. When you just the thermostat, the outside, the, the temperature will match what you set the thermostat. Like a thermometer, you simply reflect like a chameleon, you know? You're surrounded by green, you become green. You're surrounded by angry people, you become angry. You're surrounded by happy people, you become happy. God does not call us to be thermometers or chameleons. He wants us to set the spiritual time. To be walking greenhouses. You know the greenhouses? What can grow in a greenhouse and then grow outside the greenhouse? It's a controlled environment of this kingdom, of this peace, of this joy. And that's how we shine in the darkness. Because the world now has no peace and no joy. Those who remember the Lord. Even sadly, many Christians have no peace and joy. Because they don't know who they are in Christ. They're distracted by their success without realizing they're not healthy. And so, let's stand together.